If we've got the framework of our principles, we understand how hardware and software works together. We've got a good systematic tool that creates an honest feedback loop. And that's, that's, a, that's one of the things I think people don't understand about the FMS. All our little positions, like the active straight leg raise, people see them as stations where they think we're only testing your hamstring right here. Why do they think that? Because when I take somebody who's got a problem with that pattern and put them in that position, what are they telling us? Out of their mouth comes, it really feels tight. They just really feel limited. They lift their leg only that far, which by the way, by most functional standards, goniometric standards, isn't functional. And that's all they can go. That's the goal and they're not gonna see it. And they communicate to you difficulty, tension, strain, and limitation. So your automatic assumption, you got a tight hamstring. Nobody ever thinks of the other scenario because as we're leaning in, as we're seeing this, as we're almost feeling their pain, we get sucked into the illusion that, oh, that's my hamstring and it's not going to change. And it, and it really won't change. And for the same reason that if we're doing a uh, toe touch and you can't get all the way to your toes. Now, most people who can't touch their toes don't have a physical or structural limitation. And we make a big show of that when we're teaching at TPI workshops with golf or functional movement screen workshops or when we get an opportunity to be challenged on stage and somebody thinks, I haven't touched my toes in 20 years and I'm sure I'm not going to do it in five minutes with you. And we automatically assume, is it hardware or software? Well, our system proves it's software. And one of the ways it proves that is when we see people who sit in this situation and they can touch their toes here, but they cannot touch their toes here. The same things are on tension here is here and yet loading the system with the compression through your hips, through your spine, make you put on brakes. Maybe these hamstrings have been taught to behave as parking brakes for one simple reason. Most people who touch their toes shift their weight backward. They place weight behind them as they throw weight in front of them. And the sequence goes hips first, back second. But the people who can't touch their toes for some reason don't take advantage. They're almost as if their butt is up against a wall. They don't take advantage of that weight shift. I have not bent my back yet and I'm already to my kneecaps. Whereas if I don't let my hips shift backward, I have to round my back to get there. This little active straight leg raise captures this behavior at a very fundamental level because people are born with a toe touch. They're born with the length to get there. Imagine a baby in a crib putting their feet in their mouth. When we put you here and your behaviors here have been so appropriate, we can actually measure what looks like tightness. It feels like tightness, but stretch it and see if you change it. We do a little thing when we're doing our correctives where we let you put your arms right here and you're just pulling down against a resistance or a band that won't even let you do it, thus creating more muscle tone right there, right on top of your pelvis. And what you end up doing is leveling that pelvis, leveling it, getting right under your spine. Because there's a couple other problems that are going on here. This hip right here is the one nobody looks at. That's the leg that's on the ground. And if you've got a tight anterior chain here, a tight psoas there, a quad here, then all of that serves to anteriorly rotate your pelvis, putting your low back in an arch position, making it very inconvenient for you to flex this hip because everything else in your body is going into extension simply because the hip on the ground won't go into extension. So you lay down already in a compensated posture that says, Hip extension is way more necessary for me to lay comfortably than hip flexion. Yet when we ask you to lift the other leg, you're dysfunctional. Maybe not because there's anything wrong with that leg, but the scenario, the posture, the situation, and the software you put it on, it won't support it. So we can actually have an extension mobility limitation on the down leg side. We can have very poor core timing in a disadvantaged spinal position on the back side. And we can have actually weakness or active insufficiency. You don't know what that term is? Look it up. It means a muscle so short it can't do anything more. There's a thing called passive insufficiency where the muscle's so long it doesn't have a good length tension ratio. So 
We see a lot of these behaviors and it's all set up from a posture in inappropriate forward bending maybe that goes all the way back to our growth spurt and we imprint movement patterns there and we never get them back. So now, whether you're swinging a golf club or swinging a kettlebell or doing a deadlift, you're bringing pretty bad mechanics to it and your hamstrings, those tight hamstrings that you feel, are the only thing holding you together. You better hope they don't go away until you find your glutes. Because once you find your glutes, you've reduced a thing called a lower uh, cross syndrome. Look that one up too. A guy named Vladimir Yanda told us a long time ago with a hip and spine, very often your low back extensors think they're your glutes. And your hip flexors think they're your abs. And so what we get is a bunch of unnecessary tone and tightness in your low back and in your hip flexors. And it thinks it's serving you well when really if you just had a little more abs and glutes, we would balance things out and you'd be fine. Vladimir Yanda told us about that a long time ago. I had one conversation with him before we lost that brilliant soul. And I said, I think we built a screen that can capture that lower crossed and upper crossed syndrome. And the funny thing is we see it in two populations, people that overtrain and people that undertrain. Get your training right in the middle, honor your software, by periodically screening so we know how to feed the movement system exactly what it needs. For more information, visit functionalmovement.com.